This is a really good start. Um, I had to stop one video, start another one. My laptop is not working on its best today. This is really, really frustrating. Um, I don't know what's going on. Uh, I still have no, no, no viewers yet, one. So I couldn't see any messages uh, at all from the live chat um, earlier. It was all blank. Um, so I didn't know what people were saying or anything, and I think that's important for the live video. So anyway, let's go back to it. So sorry, today I'm I'm drinking some water. I'm feeling a bit dry. Uh, so the thing today we're going to be talking about boost. So the effect boost. Um, I'd fell off. It's the wind <laughs> or cold weather. It froze. Matt, oh, hey. Nice to have you here. So, um, so we're talking about boost. The effect boost has on an engine, and like I'm not going to talk about spool um, or like uh, I'm going to explain like what boost does and the effect boost has, and how you can predict the power you're going to be making on boost or how much power you would make with a certain amount of boost. But of course, then there's more variants, which I'm going to be explaining that you have to take into consideration. OK, um, so we got boost, boost. So those turbo noises, which I really like. I just don't like the feel of a boosted car. Well, it's not that I don't like the feel is I don't like the response of a boosted car. They always have a little bit of like. So, and I like, I love NA screaming engines. So each one to their own. Uh, where's the mustache? No, bring it back. Mate, the mustache nearly costed me divorce. Let's leave it without it, okay? <laughs> so, um, uh, that's it. <laughs> Oh my God, this video is starting the best way. There's boost. Everyone goes happy about it. Boost! All the boost noises. Now, <laughs> can, can you crack on with it? <laughs> oh my God. You guys are awesome as well. So, we got to the boost. And um, what is a turbo? So, um, turbo is. Um, <laughs> Your lady doesn't appreciate the French tickler. Not, not quite, no. <laughs> My lady. Let's talk about boost. Focus on the subject, okay? You are in the worst class I've ever had, okay? <laughs> oh my God. Um, so, I'm, I'm trying to focus here. Now you guys don't let me focus. Josh, you out. Next one, I'll put you out of the door, okay? <laughs> um, what is it? I cannot stop laughing because the, the thing that Josh said is just too funny, you know, to, to, for me to go back to this boost thing. Um, now, again, I'm, I'm really trying hard. We got, we, as you guys know, so what is a, a turbo? A turbo is a CFM pump or an atmosphere multiplier. Uh, and you guys are like atmosphere multiplier, yeah, because it multiplies the pressure of the atmosphere. Um, so that is actually what it does. Um, and of course, when you multiply the 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 pressure, increase the speed, and then increase the amount of air it's going to take in a certain amount of time. Um, so the things are very simple, and the 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 reason why I chose to do this video today is because I see, like, I, you know, as you guys might imagine, I see a lot of builds from other people because I like to see what other people do, um, to learn from some others, to see where the where, where people see things and what people think is good and bad, um, just to, you know, just to see where we are in where how far have we moved on. And the, the biggest problem is I find that uh, a lot of people find things impressive that they aren't that impressive. But then you got to look at it this way. None of the engines I have done till today, I considered impressive in power numbers. This is my genuine thing. They all only done what they, want, they had to do. 
full stop. It's not impressive by no means, you see. So I've seen some very impressive engine uh, results, okay, in front of me. Personally, I haven't, but like from other posts and stuff that I find quite fascinating. But myself, if I made something that really impressed me, not quite. <laughs> so you guys can see from there, like um, what it is. And as I said, what what I do, they only do the things they have to do. It's not impressive by no means, if you understand the science behind it. And that's, this is where I see it. And the thing is, on boost, it, it's almost uh, even worse sometimes because the other thing is people are looking at the numbers and not actually looking at how efficient am I being with the boost I have. And this is the, the, the thing that, to me, when I look at some, someone posting boost number, like a power number on a boosted card, first thing I like to go and see it's how much boost is it running. And then I can work out how efficient it's being because you can have... The same engine. Let's. This is just an example, and I'll exp and I will show you why all this happens. Um, you can have the same engine making 300 bhp at one bar or 400 bhp at one bar. Same exactly. Same exact engine. Same displacement with the same boost. It makes 100 bhp more. And you guys are like how? How? And my answer is the same way an NA can multiply its power. Because a turbo engine, all it is, it's a, an NA that has a boost on it. So the thing is, there's people that tend to say, oh, there's a cam for turbo, there's a cam for NA, there's, a, there's an intake for turbo, an intake for NA. It's not quite accurate. You can improve a cam timing to work slightly better on turbo, so you have a faster response. This is the genuine reason of it. Not to generate more power. So it's only to increase the 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 turbo response. It's not it's not going to make more power because it's a turbo cam. No. Usually the difference is they have slightly less overlap, so you have less uh, pressure bleed. This is the the what happened. So it's faster on 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 turbo response. Now in terms of making power, that actually might hurt power. You see, so that is, that is the thing. It, I'm not saying it will hurt power, but it might hurt power. Um, so that's, but if you if you test it on NA, you try to do the same, the engine will not respond well to it, or it could respond well to it. The thing is, there are so many variants on the engine that in changing two degrees on, uh, on a cam, it can have various different effects. Depends what, Cam, you changing the two degrees, depending what side two degrees, and depends what was the initial degrees of the cam. So this is the thing. It's uh, it's all very it's all relative to where you're starting from. So we the, the way we're going to work today. I'm going to explain you some other things about the the like on turbos. You have pressure ratios, um, and the pressure ratio is really good because. <clears throat> Pressure ratio, it will actually, it's all you need to know to, to, to find out how much power that engine would produce if it was NA or an NA engine, how much power it will produce at a certain pressure ratio. So this is generally, you can predict the power something will make. There's other variants that which I'm going to talk about that will change that, um, the outcome of that. Um, so you can actually see how much power you make. And the, the thing is, this, there's a reason why when you bolt, uh, like when you put boost on a Honda engine, they make a lot of power. Why? Because they make already a lot of power when they are in A. And again, as I said, a uh, turbo is an atmosphere multiplier, so it m just multiplies the atmosphere. It has like twice the pressure, it's going to make twice the power. It's, it's exactly like that, as a matter of fact. So this is the thing, and uh, I'm going to start. So, pressure ratio, you have to, you need to know the boost pressure your, your target is or the car is running. Add the atmospheric pressure to it, okay? So you add these two pressures. Um, and then you divide it by the atmospheric pressure. And I'm going to start with real life examples of engines I done, okay? So I, this is not things I saw someone has done it. It's cars that I've done. 
and uh, I'm going to relate to the big book. Okay. And I'm going to have to talk about uh, some jobs I've done in the past, which you guys, if you go back to our, one of them was done at, uh, it was uh, BDS Performance, so it's on our Instagram. Um, we had a, a name 44 which has our stage four at the time. The stage four for BDS performance was different from today because it has a ported head. Nowadays, we do it with a camshaft because again, on the V2 head or our V1 cam, the gain is very similar, but the with the, with the cam, you just bolt on the cam, you don't have to take the head off. It, it's, uh, it's, it's, easier it's cheaper for the customer and you get the same results so the thing is when i do a product i like to offer the best as possible for the money people pay for as you guys know so i've done this car and this was an m44 and it made 182 bhp okay and now the good thing about this why i'm using this specific one because i've done other uh, cars as you guys know page fours recently but this was dyno, exactly on the same dyno of the turbo one. And uh, so this was an M44, 182 bhp, okay? But one, the, 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 M, the one I'm going to use as um, a turbo one is an M42. So I'm going to do the usual mass, which is, this one is a um, 1.9. Okay, but the M42 turbo is a 1.8. So what we need to do is a very simple rule, which is made so easy. So the 1.9 made 182 bhp, a 1.8 is going to make x. We can do it like this because they have exactly the same components. So they have the same cylinder head, same cam. So both were timed my way. So we got 172 bhp. Okay. Am I right? Yeah, 172.4. Let's forget four. Let's say 170. So this is how much power says dyno. So 1.8, let's call it 172 bhp. NA. Okay, so we all clear. This is where we start. We, I have uh, put some, um, ah, and made this power at 7,200 RPM. Okay. Uh, now, we're going to go to, I can do with this, the, the turbo one. So the turbo one is a 1.8, and it's making 410. Or sorry, 402, not 10. It will make easily over that because it's only at uh, 2 missing RPM, 402, at 6,500, with a, um, a raising curve, a power curve raising crazy. It just doesn't stop going up. RPM. At the at the flywheel, yes, yeah. So. Um, now, we got a very big difference in power. Let's see what it is. Now, you remember I told you earlier pressure ratio? So, the, um, what do you call it? The, the turbo one, it's running 19.7 PSI of boost. And now, let's work the pressure ratio of that. So, pressure ratio equal the boost pressure, which is 19.7 plus atmospheric pressure, which is in PSI, it's 14.5 usually, which is one bar or as close as, as it can be. So 14.5. This might change a little bit, but this is like just a general. And then we have to divide it by the 14.5. And this is it. So let me work my calculator. So 19.7 plus 
14.5 equal 34.2.2 divided by 14.5 equal 2358, let's call it 2.3. Okay. Now, you want to see something really funny? 172 multiplied by 2.36. And it is 405 bhp. And the car diamond 402. Funny this, isn't it? Looks like it adds up. So this is, <laughs> the thing is, this is not rocket science, it's actually what it is. You work with pressure ratio to calculate the, the power potential of an engine. We can, the thing is, it's not only as clean as this, and I'm going to start explaining why, but uh, you could reverse it as well. So by knowing, um, how do you say it? By knowing the, the boost pressure of an engine, and if you know the power, you want to know how much power would it make if it was NA, you can actually see how much power it uh, it will do. It's not uh, it's not hard. So all you do, let's reverse this. Let's go to 402. But remember, the volume here is slightly lower, but we also at lower RPM. Because I, I know for a fact this going to a higher RPM would even pass this value, okay? So that would make, I would say, easily 410 bhp at uh, or 415. Um, so the thing. So let's go go to it and do the inverse. So I'm going to, to do, not with this one, because you guys seen like it's, uh, it's, it's not, uh, it's already here, it's all explained. Now, Let's go to another car I've seen on the M42, M44 group. Someone shared a 2.1 um, turbo build that he thought it was amazing. Um, so the car was making, oh, and I'm going to, I can't find it, but uh, I'm going to do it only and start from scratch, okay? So it was 2.1 turbo, okay? 400. And 50 bhp, and this is a realistic value for it. And the torque was 520 Nm. Okay, and you think, wow, 450 brake that is crazy. Yes, at 1.8 bar of boot. So I'll put this into PSI because I need PSI to calculate the pressure ratio. I need it. Uh, this is 26.1 psi. Okay. Now, should we calculate the pressure ratio for this? So let's go again. Pressure ratio equal 26.1 plus 14.5. Defined by 14.5. So pressure ratio equals <clears throat> 40.6 divided by 14.5. And this is equal. 2.8. Okay, so we now got our pressure ratio, 2.8. Now let's do something really funny. So how much power will this 2.1 make if it was NA? So if it was NA, we go 450 divided by 2.8 equals 160 bhp. All of a sudden, it's not as exciting anymore, is it? 
then 520 divided by 2.8. I think the torque might have been higher because it's really, it's not really impressive the torque figure I got in it. So if this was the, the 520, let's call it 540 because I don't think it's not a bad torque figure, but I'm sure it was more than this. So 540. I need to have 500 over 500. Um, cannot remember everything. So 540. Yeah, this is still not what I thought it would be. So on the torque, we got 540 divided by the 2.8. It equals 192 Nm. Now, this would be like. On the 2.1, and now let's work this. Let's see how efficient is this. So we divide 160 HP divided by 2.1, and we'll see the HP per liter. That is 76. HP per liter engine. Now, you guys on your own justice, tell me in 2021, where is 76 BHP per liter? Impressive. <laughs> this is the thing I say to people like, you really have to look at all the things to see what's impressive and what is not. And like, just if I look just at power, and I didn't know the boost, I would say, wow, that is impressive. But me being me, the first thing I would want to know is how much boost is it running? Because it's the way I like to see things. It's because it's easy to make power when you have boost. This is an example. And the thing is, all you have to do is make the internals really strong, and then you have boost on it, and it will make power. Pure, pure and simple. When you have the pressure ratio, it will be like this. You always allow it, I would say, 2 3%, okay? Because there's other factors on it. No. The, let me just see what is in here. Does compression ratio do not come into this, at this stage? I think the pressure ratio approach is quite enlightening. It is. It's very. It's the reality. Pressure. The compression ratio. Not. Not really. The compression ratio. Or even on NA, it's not where the power is. Like uh, it. It helps. But like, of course, it's, it is where the power is if you are really, really going really low or going really high. Now, the problem you have is um, when you have the compression ratio is on the on the turbo, you, you run out of uh, room because the cylinder pressure becomes so high, you cannot have any more ignition. And then, of course, then you have a problem, which is if you start to retard the ignition, you start increasing the exhaust temps. So you increase the, the boost. Increasing boost alone increases in the pressure, everything goes hotter. And then when you start retarding ignition, the exhaust side goes even hotter. So it, then you're going to start to go start burning exhaust valves, melting exhaust manifolds, everything starts to go wrong because you got excessive exhaust temperature. So this is the thing. So you lower compression ratio so you can work with the boost. And uh, you can also, you have room for ignition. And this is the beauty of the 85, which is it cools down the chamber, so allows you to run more, more boost, uh, more ignition, without actually having to worry as much about temperatures. This is why on the 85, you can make a lot more power. So it really cools down the, the 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 combustion chamber. Sorry, guys. Sometimes it's hard for me to say the things. Um, so this is the thing. Um, and like when people say my diesel makes uh, 300 bhp, my 335d, and makes all this torque, right? Work those pressure ratios out as well, and see how bad those engines are. Diesel. This is why when people tell me diesel and performance, I just go like, no, that doesn't. Such thing doesn't exist. <laughs> You know, so which is I can do one just like this, open it up for you guys like this. And then you'll understand how bad the diesel actually is, you know, how much boost they run. So 
this is the thing. Now, other thing we can see in here, okay, at uh, 76 bhp per liter. So, how much power does a standard 318IS has? Uh, 1.8, it's 140. I'm not going to put 140 because they never have 140, the M42s. They have more like 135 up to 138. That's the most I've seen on them. So let's put a 135. 135 divided by 1.8. And they have 75 bhp per liter. Nice, isn't it? So it's uh, one bit be more per liter than uh, the 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 1.8. So it's not really. What have you done to the engine? Nothing. You just added boost. That's all. Now, if we went, for example, you know, because this is planned already on that boosted one that I've done, we are planning on running 1.7 to 1.8 bar of boost. Should we see? How much? Let's call it 1.8. Let's see how much power it's going to make as um, with the, the 1.8 bar of boost. So we go. We know here it was it was an Okay. Um, we multiply it by it, and that's easy. So 172. Multiplied by 2.8. There we go. And that 1.8, at same boost pressure as this 2.1, will make 498 bhp. And then all of a sudden you have 1.8 with 498 bhp, and then a 2.1 with 450 bhp. And they are exactly at same 1.8 bar of boost. And funny this, 1.8 makes close to 50 bhp more. Why? Because it starts on a better base. Not to the, I'm not against the displacement here. The base I mean is the engine itself is more efficient. Okay. So this is over 90 bhp per liter, while the other one is at 76. It's quite a big difference. And this is what I do when uh, when I build a turbo engine. I like to, of course, when I start with the M engines as I've done in the past, they start at over 100 bhp per liter. So that's too easy, you know. It's like uh, it's 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 just too easy. And uh, what I do is I like to get the engines as close as possible to the 100 bhp per liter. If I can go even higher, the better. Um, of course, focus on having the the, the compression ratio right for turbo, prepare the, the things for turbo, and then just add boost on it. So we the, on the M5 we doing boost, I'm planning on doing 700 bhp at just one bar of boost at the 14.5 psi. And uh, my, my aim is I want to get it as close as possible first before I put the turbo on it to the 360 bhp okay i'm counting i should be able to get 350 easy enough it's at 315 at the moment and then i'll put the turbo as i just showed to you guys the, the way the pressure ratio works you can uh, this is what's going to happen now the thing is this is if the system is well designed it's well made okay and uh, on that 2.1, it might be suffering from other other problems. Is there a calculation to choose a variable geometry of turbo? Um, for, not, not quite, not, not that I know of, okay? Or might may, may be, but uh, that uh, variable geometry of a turbo, it's diesel stuff, and it's not my, my cup of tea, as it is. So I'm going to delete this, okay? So you guys, is this clear for you guys? Can you understand what boost does on an engine? So I can move on to the other thing, to the other things that are going to affect boost as well? Yes, no, maybe, yeah, all right. <laughs> yeah, beautiful. Hello, next step is here, beautiful. Hey, just put your hands up, I might be able to see. No, I, I'm actually not. Yeah, beautiful. Yeah, okay. Can I delete the full board then? I'm going to start.
it's all clean now. It's nail love. Yeah. <laughs> it's good for people that like turtles today. Back into double figures. Yeah. So I spoke on another video. Um, I bought some equipment to to measure the density on the, inside the plenums that I make to try to make them more efficient. Um, so to see if there was any drop or other things. I also have another equipment that uh, I got quite a lot for diagnosing when I'm developing. Um, and if you guys see that I'm very quiet on Instagram, that usually means I am developing something new. And I really like to stay focused on it. So I don't post a lot on Instagram. I just crack on with it. There's a lot of things going on uh, at the moment on uh, on the workshop in terms of new development. If people, some customers, visitors, they know what we're doing because it's there in front of them because we, we work on it. But uh, we don't like to publish things we till things are actually finished. So um, going back to it. Um, I have also have uh, a gauge to measure pressure, but that I use on the exhaust side. And uh, that's important because that's to calculate the true back pressure. Like this is what I mean by back pressure. It's not the thing that misconception, oh, putting a free flow exhaust, there's less back pressure, the car makes more power. All right, no, no. So if really that was the issue, less back pressure, the better. Let's not use back pressure. I don't like to use that word that way. Um, it's uh, and I spoke about this on a, on another video, I believe. Um, the with an exhaust, the less pressure is better. But then you'll say, all right, so I'll make it as big as I can. Uh, not quite, because you need the, the gas space for the scavenging. So if the exhaust is too big, there will be no gas space. No gas space. There's no scavenging. No power. As simple as. That. Well, it makes power, but it's it's the volumetric efficiency will never go over 100. So that's it. Uh, going back to um, empty board. Now, this comes down to examples that I had as well um, not long ago. Um, I was tuning uh, one of the 318s. We put a V3 cylinder head. Um, and um, it has, the car was a, a, a stage four. Okay. And then the customer wanted to go, all right, let's go as well for a cylinder head. So it had a V3 cylinder head. And the, the V3 cylinder head is a massive jump from a standard one. It's a really big jump. Um, and the car, like it was making 185 inch. OK. And then it went only 295. It's not the gain I wanted to have because that should have gone to over 200, I would say more, to 10 to 15 bhp. It's the power I think that engine can make with the setup. And uh, we were like, ah, why is it not making power? The other thing I've noticed on that uh, car when I was tuning, I've done on that day, on that car, 140 dyno runs till I get it to a point that I was happier with. Bear in mind, you guys have no idea how long it took to get to this power. I really did struggle because when I first put it uh, on the dyno, it didn't make one bhp more than this. And it made a lot less torque. And uh, so what phenomenon is this? What was wrong? Um, and it comes down to having the wrong combination. So what was wrong on the combination then? If it has my intake, it has out my head, my cams, and I like you guys thinking, so what was wrong then? Well, it has a standard exhaust. <laughs> this is the problem. And uh, what we've done, you see, the head flows a lot more, okay? The exhaust cannot flow. What the head is, is trying to throw out, it, it just doesn't. So we have, we still have a 50 mil exhaust on it. 50, yeah, it's very small. This is smaller than the ones I use on 116. Um, so this is the thing. I started looking at it and thinking, and like to get this power, and then very odd things was happening. Top end, the AFR, I couldn't get it to be where I wanted it, like proper, stable, where I wanted it. Ignition on the, like when I was doing the map, the map on the advanced, I couldn't get it past 
um, and make, making power past 24 degrees, which is very unusual um, because I was still working on the standard compression ratio. Um, so I really started looking at things and then I started playing with cam timing. And uh, I ended up on a cam timing that it was funny. It worked. It gained torque everywhere, like, but the car didn't feel the way it should. It didn't feel crisp. It, no, when I driven it, it didn't feel right to me. The owner of the car was extremely happy about it. He was really happy because it was a, a difference, but the difference was everywhere. It just, uh, it had more everywhere, which we managed to make that with the cam timing. Um, but I had to move everything towards the earlier place of the RPM. And the, re the genuine, genuine reason for this is just the exhaust. So the problem you have is it was starting to create too much pressure on the exhaust. So at low RPM, it doesn't make a difference. You have all the speed. Of course, then because the hand, everything is bigger, like it loses a little bit of port speed and down low, it's going to, to lose some, some of the torque. Um, on that specific hand design, because there's more ideas for the future of the car in terms of the short block is going to be built for higher RPM and everything to make some more CPS power because he wants to get close to 30 bhp as I used to have on my car. So I left the hand done on a similar way to my what my car had, so it makes the power all the way up to the top. Um, so it sacrifices a little bit of the port speed to gain quite a, a decent, a noticeable amount of CFM. So normally you're going to lose a little bit down low. Now, this is fine. This is nothing zero to the exhaust. Is once you start revving, the, um, you're going to have a lot of uh, exhaust speed, but then you're going to start having a lot of pressure. And what happens on the top? Why all of a sudden, I start to have, uh, I cannot, the fueling is not right, it's not as it's supposed to be. Then the ignition, I cannot really do the ignition I usually do. What is happening? So the pressure on the exhaust starts to get so high when the exhaust valve is open, the exhaust comes out, the, the air comes out, and then there's so much pressure in there, it's easier for it to go back into the cylinder than to go out. So what happened is you got atmospheric pressure, okay, which is one bar. All it takes is on the exhaust side to go to 1.5 bar. You all of a sudden you fill in the cylinder again with the burned gases. So it's effect effectively an EGR. And what it does, it reduces drastically the octane rate, the octane rating on the fuel, okay. And then all of a sudden, your volumetric efficiency just disappears because you're just filling the cylinder with old air instead of the new air. So the air besides, and that it's not only going back, it can actually go into the intake as well. And you start seeing that because the exhaust, the intake valves start getting darker. It's, uh, it does the EGI effect. So what do we do? Like, what did I do to, to make it uh, better? It's not perfect, it's better, as I said. And this is why I spent a lot of time doing the cam timing, intake and uh, the exhaust. So, uh, what we do is, okay, so we don't want the exhaust to go into the intake. All you have to do is work on the, on the overlap and where the, the valves open. So, we, we've done is open the intake valves a little bit earlier and uh, the exhaust, um, Oh, sorry. Uh, my, just a second. I'm trying to think of the degrees and on a way to, to make you guys understand it better way. Uh, yes, intake uh, valves open earlier and the exhaust valves close it on a different place as well. I'm not going to say if it's early or late. I think you guys will be able to understand because otherwise I'm just going to tell you all the work I do and the time I spend finding these things. Um, so, so I'm actually putting the engine completely out of timing. So what it does is there's less reversion from the exhaust side, okay? So come on guys, think a little bit. You know what I'm doing to have less reversion. Um, and then on the intake, is going to close earlier. So there's less overlap. So what, what, you, what you then have is the air doesn't have time to go back. At the same time, you are increasing the 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 torque down low because the valve is opening on an area that is more efficient for a lower rpm 
And this is the, the way I found to go around it. Now, this is on an NA, which the difference was not that, that big. But then I, had a, I was talking to someone when this happened, and he told me about something else that is extremely, like, it's important. It's, it's more knowledge we shared, and it made so much sense. Someone has a, a car. Okay. It doesn't matter the brand model. Um, I know all the details, but I don't want to go into it. Um, so the car was making 550 HP. Okay, terrible. They wanted to get to the 600 HP. What they've done? They decided the turbo can do it, the engine can do it. Let's change the cams. They did change the cams. After changing the cams, the car went to 520 bhp. Okay, the cam was far was a far better cam. It went down. It lost 30 bhp. And you guys like, wow, so if the cam is really better, why did it lose power? Well, when you install a cam, it can lose power if you don't time them right, okay? But uh, they were timed right. Then the tuner that was doing the car at the time told them, um, well, the cams are not good. They are not good. And the thing they've done, which was good for them, was they contacted someone that I know and said to him what was going on. They explained. And uh, he said to them, okay, measure your exhaust pressure. Now, they have 2.1 bar of boost pressure, so on the intake. And then, ta-da, on the exhaust, they have 2.6. Can you guys see why the car lost power? So it lost power. I know you guys cannot see the numbers that well, but I'm explaining to you. Because it starts having reversion. So it starts feeling the, because the valve, the exhaust valve stayed open for longer, it just, uh, all the pressure that was on the exhaust start going back into the cylinder. And because the pressure was higher than on the intake, the power goes down. And usually it starts making the power go like that, and then just, oh. No efficiency. And this is what I hate seeing. I hate seeing torque curves like where the torque really completely vanishes. Um, so, how do you fix this problem now? This is a, a thing that I, I ask. And uh, there's a lot of people that uh, think, right, fit a bigger wastegate. It's going to bleed the um, exhaust manifold pressure. Now, what do you guys think of this idea? Please answer on the comments. The old 13 of you, wow, I'm getting famous, 13. I'm not depressed. i rather have not many, but good ones. So what do you guys think? How, how do you, what would cure the problem? Do you think it's fitting a, a bigger wastegate would fix this? You only sorting issue on the exhaust, not on the cylinder. It is the exhaust the problem. It's where you have the problem is on the exhaust. So because the pressure is too high. No idea really. Matt knows. I think I would get I would have guessed waste it. Okay. Anyone else? Okay. Bigger FI exhaust. Obviously wrong. Wait, Matt. It's not. Uh, I'm not going to answer yet. I'm. I'm waiting for more people to to get on on it. People are shy. They're not saying anything. Wow. Guys, come on. One, two, three, four, five. Okay, only five people are interacting. Matt knows. Come on. Yeah, there's no one says anything. They're just looking. And I'm shy, not saying anything. I don't want to be wrong. Don't like guys, we all we all are wrong sometimes. And it's part of learning to become better. 
gives us just a better understanding. Maybe some people feel like back at school, right? Yeah, probably. I don't know. <laughs> anyway, I'm going to answer. Like generally, like uh, this is something I also had a misconception of. Ah, if you have your exhaust pressure is too high, put a bigger wastegate, that will sort the issue. No, it doesn't. Um, <laughs> all right. Okay, I get that. So, and the answer is no, it's not wastegate. It's never going to, to change the... Well, it changes it a little bit, but it's not going to be the difference you need to reduce the exhaust manifold pressure. So, what you need? Bigger AR on the exhaust. So, it can flow more air out. This is the only way you can actually in this and make more power. And I'll tell you the outcome of that. But the, what I mean, what why did I brought you here is, for example, that 2.1 I mentioned earlier. If the, the turbo, the AR on the turbo is too small, it actually be making less power. It could be making more power than what it actually is doing. Um, a good this is why it's good to have a reference when the car is NA. So when you put the boost, you know where you have to land. And if you don't land there, you know there's something wrong, unless you're measuring the exhaust pressure as well. If you are, then you can you can change that. Because when you, the pressure on the exhaust is too high, again, it's going to suffer from reversion, fills the, the cylinder chamber with, with the burnt air. And you don't really want that. You need new, fresh air in, and so the engine makes the power it can. And the thing is, they did change the AR. They went to a bigger AR, a much bigger AR, and full exhaust as well. Of course, the problem with that, it affects the response of the turbo. But then it's not, you cannot gain without losing in some aspects. And now the thing is, on the same turn, with the, that they've done the 520 HP, they went bigger, but quite a, a chunk bigger. It's only the size, but there's no point of referring to size. It dropped the exhaust pressure, then went down to two bar. Okay. And the car made 628 I remember the numbers quite well because it was a conversation that I will not forget. Um, so, you see, the thing they gained by changing the exhaust 100 VHP. So, the thing is, this shows. The tuner that was tuning, he had no fucking clue what he was talking about. The that this is why, like when you when you tune uh, an engine, or when like I know that from experience, there's a lot of factors that can affect the power production of the engine. Okay, and uh, this is why I like to see into every small detail of. Um, of what's done on it and like or what the car is doing this is why i bought equipment to measure the atmospheric pressure uh, the intake manifold pressure it calculates the differential pressure then the exhaust pressure everything is taken into account it's uh, it's one of those things if i don't do this i will never be able to to learn as much and to I'm not going to be to make myself any better. I'm just going to be tuning things like this. It's the same on my head porting. I found like on the past two years, the jump I gave in terms of knowledge in every single aspect of an engine, I'm, I'm on a very different level. And this is why nowadays my products are better than before. And I'm able to produce more with less. It's only because I the science is something that I've studied to a very deep level so it's easier for me to do judgments on what i need to do on a certain engine that i'm doing and even knowing that i never done an engine that impressed me on the figures the main reason of that is because i know what it has to do and uh, it, it's it's one of those things i calculate the the power it, it will have to do and then it does it doesn't impress me it's just i'm expecting it you know that that is the thing i don't work anymore like as blind as I used to work like generally it was a blind blind work it was natural and error I knew the principle of things but nowadays if I look back looking at myself I look at myself as someone that didn't know what he was doing it's not that I didn't know what I was doing because I was getting the results I was doing the right things but I was not fully understanding what I was doing and I was getting the things but 
my nature of trying to understand better and more about what I'm doing is what brought me to the level of knowledge I have nowadays. And it's still far from what I wanted, to, what I want to achieve, you know. But the the thing I'm doing is I'm trying to share all this knowledge I have with you guys. So, in generally, it's not to try to prove that I'm good. It's just to kill all the misconceptions you have. What I do in terms of evolving myself, it's for me. It's not for anyone else. It's not I'm not doing it for other people. I'm doing it because it's my personal target, you know. But the need of AR can be found when you calculate what turbo you need, right? Especially on performance turbos. They usually have the graph according to every AR. Yes, of course. But then let's let's put it this way. You already have a turbo one. Okay, your build is done. And this was the case. The car was done. It was making the power it should. Then all of a sudden, they just put a different cam. Everything changes. So therefore, it's not right anymore. And this is the this is what I said earlier. It's all to do with the right combination. You know, it's like that. Uh, that uh, it's on DNA is exactly the same. If you have too much exhaust pressure, you're just going to reverse into the cylinder, and the power is gone. So that's why I say to people, there's no such thing as. Uh, Turbo and, uh, and NA builds, or it's like every it's an engine has to be efficient, full stop. And the thing is, when people say uh, ink take money, a turbo manifold, and I, I just uh, to me, it makes me how do I put it? it it's a bit uh, laughable, like because it's people that most people that say that they never actually compare it NA versus turbo directly, the same exact engine on the same components to see that when you put boost on it, it multiplies, it's it's mass, it's pure mass. And then it just, you see, I explained to you guys, like uh, on the previous video, the atmospheric pressure, how much it affects the, the air density. And you can work on that. If you have double the pressure, you're going to have double the density. That is it. We ha I have all the things in here showing the small changes, how much affects density and the amount of power you can make with a certain density. Okay, you see, I'm doing the things on an order. Then when you guys want to understand better certain thing, you can go to the to, to a layer underneath and then just get the knowledge out of it. Thanks, Bruno. You are gold. Thank you very much. Learned a lot about every aspect of the engine or car in the time I followed you. Keep up the good work, man. Well, I hope I have enough content to to, to show you things. And the, the, the beauty about it, we got uh, Matt, for example, he just put a question, I'm going to answer it in a minute. Matt came to to my workshop um, with his car. And one thing, he, I opened my laptop to, to see some, uh, some dyno printouts that I had from other engines. And he was gobsmacked by the amount of data I have of cars I've dined. And Matt, that have changed again. Um, this is my new laptop. And on this one, my other one is over 3,000. Uh, it's, I think, 3,050 dino runs. And uh, this new one is already a, So, sorry, guys. I'm just uh, not ignoring you. Just finding this dino test. Property. So I got already 289 files on this one. So where does this put me? Um, in less than a year, I got uh, close to 3,500 dyno tests just on developing and testing cars, things that I've seen. And I can talk from experience in most of the things I do, which I prefer to. If it's an area that I haven't seen much or tested much, I rather not talk about. Um, and this is the thing that some people do miss is I actually tend to talk about things that I've seen or I have experience with. I don't, if I have no experience working with something, I will not uh, talk about it in, in, uh, in the, like, I'd rather not, you know, I'm not, uh, like, I don't like to try to guess things, but with all the science behind, I can try to explain certain things. Now, Matt, uh, that's a good question. I always wonder where do you start in terms of the calculation? Is it compressor, turbine? You got compressor wheel on the intake side and turbine wheel on the exhaust side. So the thing is, you got, um, you got a thing that is the, um, how do you call it? Oh, my God. The uh, is the compressor map. That's it. So the compressor map 
it tells you where you want to be. And you know the beauty about it? It has the thing we just spoke about. It says pressure ratio the axis. And on this side, it has usually CFM or the amount of air it can move at a certain pressure rate. So you have this. And then you're going to have like the island of the tunnel, which are like this. Okay. And then this is well where it is the most efficient of the tarot. So depending on how much power you want, okay, let's say this is very complicated. I think there's people explaining this in detail. I can explain all of this, but then this video will last another hour and we're already 55 minutes into it. But uh, the thing is, you have to, you have a target on boost. You want to have on an engine, okay? You go to that target. Let's say 2.8. Let's say we use it. We use it early. It's easy. So we go up to 1.5. You know what it is. Okay. Then we know 1.8 is going to be around here. And then we draw a line from there. Okay. Then in here, we got the amount of hair, the turtle can pump. And I told you guys before how much, uh, how much, uh, how much air you need to make a certain amount of power. Okay, let's say you want to run this, you want to make 400 HP. Okay, so 400 is. Well, I'm, I'm feeling very tired today, you guys. Sorry, I haven't slept much last night, and now my brain is really struggling to to think straight. Um, God, my brain just went blank because I'm talking about turbo, and suddenly I come back into this. I think it's point. So, that's the final. Under the four feet per second. So let's say it needs under the four feet per second of air. Um, I think it is not, my head is not 100% right at the moment. So you go in here and you're going to have the value 100, 200, 300, um, whatever. It can't be right anyway. Let's say 300. Okay, so 300. 300 of these pressures, like 300 is going to be. So then you see that power, that pressure ratio is going to land you here. Is this the most efficient area for this turbo to work? No, actually it is. So you move, this turbo is going to be too big. You have to go smaller. So it would work well if your pressure ratio is higher. Not as well, but then the same, this will make this power here. Go to here to the center, which is the most efficient area. Where you see on the, it goes like the because the thing is when the turbo works it heats up the air okay so you gotta see the efficiency it has in terms of pumping it as well and this is why you need an intercooler and uh, it never it's never at hundred percent that doesn't exist eighty percent is extremely high you know if usually these center islands are. 75%, I think. I'm not too sure. I need to go back into this. And this is why I need an intercooler on it, because then you bring the air back to the temperature it should have. Um, in here, let's say it would be 500 here, and then it would be at, okay, 2.8 is actually here. So it would be there. It, in here, it's still, it's not a good area to land. Anyway. This is just so you guys have a, an idea. If you want me to bring this into detail, I can do, but I need to prepare the subject, you know. Is uh, I need I need to be less tired as well. Um, let's explain this better. So this is the thing. It's after one hour of explaining time of coming down to this, but this is basically what it is. So you have to look at it. Then on the exhaust side, you can also see how much it can flow and what pressure and whatnot. So this is why it's important to look at the, um, the compressor map. So you, you see the ideal turbo for you. You don't want the turbo to be too big, or too small, 
it's uh, it's uh, it's one of those you know guys it's the it's the thing but the most important thing of all it's turbo works on pressure ratio and then when you you see the pressure ratio i showed you like it's like with things that things that i've tested engines that i built or might put my things on it it made that and the, the good thing about this the beautiful thing about this is the fact that those two were actually dynos on the same dyno, which is made it perfect to use it as, as an example. You can, if you go to the BDS performance, I think it was in October last year, the post on the black compact on the dyno, and you will see the 182 bhp that are made on that dyno. And you will come to BDS Motorsport a uh, month ago, I posted things about this 318 IS Turbo, and you'll see it's the same dyno. So you can actually work again the the things so it's not rocket science it's the way things work and the, the, as i showed in here the only thing that can change it um, is the if the exhaust pressure is too high you know it will happen it will not make the power it's supposed to but bearing in mind the tuner has done they have done their own work and they've done everything right and they calculated all of that and they looked at the the islands of comp of, uh, of efficiency of the turbo and stuff that's it. So because otherwise, let's put it this way. If the turbo is only to work on boost, why would they rate it for 420, 500, 600 bhp? Why would that exist? Boost is boost, isn't it? This is the way I think it is. Huh? Boost is boost. So why, why then bo different boost makes different power? Like, how come on the same boost you can have more power? This is the thing: is how much air is actually pumping. You know how much, how much more it needs to go over the atmospheric pressure to make a certain amount of power. So, you can have 500 cfm at atmospheric pressure, or 500 cfm with two bar of boost. It depends what's receiving it. That is the thing. Now, this is based on turbo, okay? Because if you have a rising rate supercharger, which is like a road trax. It's not like this, it's completely different, but that's the same. It's going to one end on, end up on the same thing. At this, like if you have the line, let's say you have the line in it, and for the, but I'm going to do torque because I think it's to explain this. So torque line, and it comes down, goes up, and then comes up. Okay? Right. You put the turbo on it, it's going to go. Stays around the same, and then all of a sudden goes up, and, and then copies the one, the other one, but just taller. And then you put on it a rising rate supercharger that ends up on the same boost level as this, and the line is going to be like this. So it actually, it's very funny. Wait, I got the, uh, the 2.8 supercharger, the rising rate supercharger, and when I saw torque line, it's quite funny. So it's some, like this torque line. And the torque line looks almost like a power line. And all because it keeps on bringing more boost. More RPM you make, the more a boost it puts on the engine. So the torque line keeps on climbing because you keep on constantly raising the, the pressure over it. So the line changes completely. But if you keep the same position here, like on the turbo, you can go up. Uh, the, the, the spool of the turbo, when it's spooling, it should be within the same as the NA. May, might lose a little bit, might not lose. I don't think it, they, they should lose. If they lose, it means something's not done right. Um, and that is it. So, guys, this is, uh, this is the all for today. Okay. Um, there's things I think I'm forgetting. You guys keep on asking, uh, not keep, you, you ask some questions that I have to still go for them. Uh, from previous uh, video, I had a question that I said, I'll answer it on next one. So I'm going to read it now. Give me just a second. Comment. There we go. Radu, are you there? Hello, Radu. I know he was earlier, so I'm not sure if he still is in, because this is for him. So he asked me, um, 
If I install a Walbro fuel pump, but leave the stock 3.5 bar fuel pressure regulator, um, is this better? Will it need a retune? Uh, I had one for a short while and actually felt worse, running really rich. Hmm. This is funny. What do you guys think? You keep the same fuel pressure, same injectors, you just change the pump. The car suddenly goes worse. Now, what do you think? Is it to do with the pump or there's something else wrong? I put your answer there. I have the same the same question. <laughs> David has the same question as you. That's funny. It is maybe fucked. <laughs> watch the language. Kids might watch this. I don't think they do. I say it's not for kids in the video. So that's the thing. Okay. Fuel pump. Leave fuel rail. Injector. Six injectors because his, his car is in the third way. Fuel pressure regulator. And then comes out the return line back into the tank. Now, first question What control, what, uh, what puts the fuel in cylinders? What is the thing that puts the fuel in cylinders. Why is it? Let's see. Injectors. Injectors, injectors, injectors. Perfect. Everyone is on the same page. 100% correct. It's the injector. Okay. Now, what is the thing that controls the, the pressure on the rail? Yeah. Fuel pressure regulator, you yeah, baby! <laughs> Matt, I'm going to offer you some glasses next time you come, these ones. Yeah, boy! Oi! <laughs> Correct. Fuel pressure regulator. Spot on. So, the car ran really bad when it changed the pump. The pump has nothing to do with the fuel that goes on the injectors or it does only if your old one was not good so let me elaborate for you so the fuel pressure regulator is to skip a steady pressure of 3.5 bar the injectors are working and as the duty cycle tends to increase the pump keeps on pumping fuel and then the pump also always produces you if it's good if it's right, rightly dimensioned for the engine, always pretty, uh, pumps enough fuel to keep a steady pressure up to the power, whatever it's rated for, the fuel it, it can supply, okay? So this controls the fuel, keep the fuel at 3.5 bar, okay? The pump, all it has to do with pump. You can put them at 5 bar. I work, I can work in some cars, I work at 5 bar. They are made, the more aggressive builds, I work at 5 bar. Um, now, he said the car, when you change the pump, went richer. Where is the problem going to be? So the problem is going to be, is the original pump as a problem? And when this car was tuned, was tuned for the original fuel pump that had a problem. Therefore, what is going to happen? The car was running lean and they added more fuel, but they never checked if the fuel pressure was right. If the car was dropping fuel pressure, because what tends to happen is when the fuel pump gets tired, when you start revving, when it really starts using that fuel, the pump will never reach the 3.5 bar. 
So the pressure starts going down. And what happens when the pressure goes down? Injector rate goes down. And I'll, like, I'll show you how. So this video is taking a lot longer than what I expected, but it's fine. Just for you, rather. OK? So we got. I'm going to calculate this. I got a calculator for this. So we got, let's say, the standard injectors, I think they're 192cc. Uh, 192 cc. The fuel pressure, let's say at three bar, it's they are rated at that. New fuel pressure, so they run at 3.5. That gives them a cc of 207 cc at 3.5 bar. Okay. Then, if it's not keeping the pressure at three bar. At 3.5, what happens? Let's say it drops to 3 bar. At 3 bar, they have 194 cc, uh, 192 cc at 3 bar. So because the injector became smaller, not smaller, but because there's less pressure, it, passed, it has less fuel feeding the cylinders. On the map, you have to go and, oh, God, it's going lean. Let's put more fuel. It needs more fuel. Okay, actually, the problem was because the pump was already not feeding enough. And the problem, it comes again, is the injectors are opening for longer, so the, the pressure keeps on going even lower and lower. And then you're really putting a lot more for it to do what it's supposed to do. And this is the thing. This is, to me, the only reason why your car started running worse. is because you had a problem on your pump previously. And this is probably why your car is not making the power it should. So simple, isn't it? Ta-da! Science again. It's like a pump will not have an effect. If, if the fuel system is working well, the regulator is working well, the injectors are working well, the fuel pump shouldn't affect the that. If you just upgrade the pump to one that can handle more fuel, what only thing that still controls the amount of fuel the engine is taking in, it's the injectors. It's not the pump itself. The pump, all it has to do is feed the rail. If you're not bleeding the rail because injectors aren't that big yet to bleed the rail, you don't use it as much fuel as the pump can supply, changing the pump, it's not going to affect the, the way the car is running. Quick question. You can, you can ask questions, yeah. Replacing the stock injectors, Bosch 360C ones, will I need to change the stock to, well, I don't know what you want to do, but first thing you, you do when you change injectors, recalibrate the ECU for it, okay? Um, because the fuel pump has to do with the power you're going to make, not to, pardon, not to do with the injectors you put on, okay? So you can put 1,000 CC injectors and run on the stock fuel pump if the car is still making the stock power as simple as that so it's to do with what you want to do and the power you want to achieve this is the way it works it's not i'll put bigger injectors i have to change the pump if you're still making the same power it's absolutely pointless so you have to see what you want to do you know if you want to buy the 363 cc injectors buy them put them on the car i, I think your car was running i tuned david's car um via team viewer okay he was abroad i was tuning it for him and his car was stupidly close to the to the 100% duty cycle. So I told him he needed bigger injectors. You can put the bigger injectors, okay. I'll do the calibration for them for you the same way as I've done on the past, and that's fine. You only need to upgrade to a better fuel pump once you do the rest of the things. As I said, I worked on the stock fuel pump on my 318 till very high power, and never had an issue. Thing is, I fitted another pump, not new one, the car run the same. Also, the fuel pressure regulator is new. One last thing, if I take the vacuum line off, fuel pressure stays there you are. No, 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 no. Look, the, when you, the vacuum actually makes it, it makes it do less pressure than higher. So it just uh, taking the, some strength out of the spring. Okay, so it reduces from 3.5, it goes to three bar. Okay, if you take the vacuum, it stays at 3.5 all the time. They are rated, the pressure they have written on them, that says 3.5, it's rated at atmospheric pressure. Okay, if you put a vacuum on it, it's going to reduce the pressure they have. 
because the vacuum pulls the diaphragm and that helps it like it just makes it uh, have less pressure on that's the way it works so the thing is the, the this is the only thing i can find for the explanation is like there's no other way around it and the other thing is you are basing yourself on feel i believe um and these things Base it on feel, it's not really the ideal. It's we put it on the dime, then you see what's actually doing. It's not just I feel hmm, that doesn't exist. Okay, so the other thing is when you do this, do it more scientifically. Don't go just like it's running rich. Look at just the FR. See if the fuel pressure is right. Okay, because this might be the biggest problem you have. You know, you go from where you start, fuel pressure is this much. This is when you start experiencing problems like this, you should do. So See where I am. Do a pull. See if the fuel pressure stays where it should. Okay, it's uh, this is the best way of doing it. If the thing is, the vacuum line only only work on partial load and idle and things like this. When you flat out, it's zero inside intake manifold or like the the should the the I to go that uh, for I plugged the charger on didn't didn't plug the plug on. That was clever. Anyway, so. The, the, I forgot what I was now. So, yeah, the, when you are flat out, the pressure inside the plenum should be equal to the pressure in the atmosphere. This is if your manifold is working well. It's a good manifold. So, therefore, it's going to be a 3.5 bar, which is the pressure, fuel pressure, the pressure regulator is that. When you are flat out, all this goes to the maximum fuel pressure the, the regulator is made for or the what is set for if you have an adjustable one. This is the thing. So don't have that misconception. I had years ago, which was really annoying. Uh, people used to disconnect the, F, the take the vacuum of the fuel pressure regulator. <laughs> no. <laughs> they say, oh, it makes more power, it has more fuel. And the, the thing is, it's two big misconceptions. Is it will not make more power because more fuel never made more power. And just by disconnecting the vacuum line, you're only making the current richer on partial load and the uh, and when you are on idle. So it's just no. So it's two in one. Uh, that's the thing. Anyway, guys, well, once again, thank you very much uh, for the video. Um if you have more questions, leave them on the comments and I'll answer it on the next video on Monday. Um, so this is it. I really appreciate some of you guys are doing quite a lot of uh, uh, quite a lot of sharing. And this is really important to me. Um, like I, I would like this to reach as much people as possible because I think it uh, it is very important for everyone to understand and like what actually works and what doesn't you know um and this is the main uh, the main point of these of these videos it's, uh, it's just so people can actually see what is what um but again this is all things that it's real life testing but it's things i've done if things are done differently there will be different outcomes but uh, certain things cannot change much and this is the the, the basics of it okay so if you guys start to understand more the science behind an engine, it's going to help you quite a lot on trying to achieve the best for your engine on the best result and best possible combo. It's easier for you to select what you're going to use and have the right combination. I'm always here, like uh, you can ask the questions. If you're thinking of doing a combo, let's say I want to reach this much power, I'm thinking of this, I can give you my point of view on it. I can do it on a live video and explain to you because as today we had, like your um, what you're doing and the questions you 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 are asked, someone else might have the same question. Today it happened, which is funny. Um, so it's you have to really see what you want and have a target to to reach. If you think of a way of doing it, just think about it scientifically. Don't think the bigger the better. No, it's the best combination. It's the better full stop it's then you have something that actually works really well that's the difference a good tuner you see when they do that when they they get the right combination and it works just nice and effortless so that's the thing guys keep on sharing these videos please let's try to get this to as much people as possible so see if um, some of the misconceptions go away um 
And well, I, I, I hope you guys enjoyed it. You know, they are long. I can see you guys are engaging a lot more, which is brilliant. I really like that. You know, it's nice not to be talking to myself. And this is why I don't do other type of video, which is just standing here, no one talking to me and I explain things. I rather have people to interact with. It's easier for me to to explain things and it's also easier for you to guys to understand. So again, just to put a like, you know, subscribe. All the, everyone that is in here, they are subscribed already. Um, and again, great video today. I, I hope it cleared the, the waters on the boost things. Um, as you guys can see, I, I also know how, how to make a turbo work. Um, just, uh, well, that's it, the end of the video. Questions on the comment, share, subscribe, like, the usual stuff. Um, I'm going to bring uh, another video as well uh, soon on a different content. Uh, it's going to, to be related with our, some parts we're developing at the moment. Um, so because now you guys have the basic understanding of what i'm doing or not what i'm doing of uh, what things do i can explain you better what i'm doing so you guys are going to start looking at things and understanding actually what it does which is really good um so well guys brilliant of you for being there i really enjoyed so i'll see you guys on the next one thank you very much